Hi everyone, today's um, short video is going to be all about using camcorders and a little bit about mirrorless cameras as well. Before we look at the um, camcorder itself, just want to explain that um, obviously I'm sat in the back of the car. Um, some surveillance teams um, work one up, one person in the car, they drive, they use the radio, they use the camera, they do everything, get out on foot, the whole lot. Some other teams, mainly enforcement teams, work two up. So you've got one person in the driver's seat, another person in the passenger seat, one drives, one uses the radio, does the commentary. However, if I'm working on a team, um, recently I was on a three-man team, we had two cars and I was in the back. The driver did everything from commentary, the radio, filming if he had to, um, just like you normally would on a surveillance. In the back, why am I here? Um, first of all, on the iPad I can use the tracker, and secondly, I'm in a good position. From here, I can then take the video or get the photographs while the driver's manoeuvring the car. I'll always sit in the back. I rarely sit in the front, because to a target, they just see two guys in the car all the time. If I'm sat in the back, I've got driver's cover, I've got the windshields, I've got temporary covers on the windows, I can keep a low profile and we can get the money shot because that is what it's all about. Um, if I'm on my own, quite often I will dive into the back and I will do the same thing as long as the engine's off and the wipers are off, um, etc. So then, the humble camcorder. A lot of guys use these on the circuit. Very, very simple to use. Even a giraffe can use one of these. Um, you turn it on, you open up the screen, you press the record button. What's difficult about that? But because they're so easy to use, they are quite unforgiving and you can make a lot of mistakes that makes your video look very, very unprofessional. I'm going to cover a few of those things now. Some of the things that um, we should consider, first of all, is actually setting up the video camera. Prior to going out on a surveillance, we need to format the card. Make sure it's virgin, clear off any old files, whether they're stills or video. The next thing is go through the menu settings and set the date time group. Um, this needs to be set to the correct time, to the world clock. But more importantly, if there's two or three of you on the task, or you're using covert cameras as well, all the timers have to be synchronised. That's very important. It adds professionalism, it gives integrity to it. Um, and if somebody else is doing the editing, it really helps when we're doing the editing. So, format the card, get the date and time group. Then you've got the technical settings. Um, frame rate, shutter speed, ISO, that type of thing. Most cameras have this feature where you can set the quality of your images or of your video. If you've got 4K, set it to 4K, but you'll need a high capacity SD card because it's quite a large file. If not, set it slightly below or minimum 1080p. That's the quali best quality that you'll get really um, uh, from a cheaper camera. But if you can do 4K, 4K. Then it might ask you to set the frame rate, frames per second. Normal video, and this is taken on 25 frames for, per second. If it's for surveillance and you've got a moving subject or you're moving the camera as well, I would set it to 50 frames per second um, because that way you're going to capture the images and you will not get any blurred video. So if you can, set it to 50 frames per second. The ISO, the sensitivity of the um, sensor, set that to automatic because you may be filming in shadow one second, then going to a bright situation and then another, um, and the sensor needs to cope with that, um, as does the exposure. Um, so those are a few settings to, um, to think about. Some cameras have a feature called um, steady shot, and that literally does what it says on the tin. Switch that on, that is used most of the time. And because if you've got camera shake, especially when you're at the top end of the zoom, it should minimize that and give you a steady shot. Something else to think about is the, um, the zoom. Now, a lot of people, when they go out there and start doing surveillance, they think your target is gonna be far away. We need to bring the subject as close as possible. This is quite a cheap camera. 
and it says on here that it's times 54 optical. What that means, it will bring the picture 54 times closer by the virtue of the fact the glass lens in the camera moves. When you get digital zoom, and this might be something like 120 or 300 digital zoom, the actual electronics in the camera take over and it brings the picture closer and closer and closer. But as it does so, you get this drawback, the picture becomes poor quality and pixelated, and that's what we want to avoid. Luckily on this camera, and most cameras, you can actually switch it on or switch it off, so it doesn't go beyond the optical zoom and doesn't go into that realm of digital um, zoom, which we, do, which we want to avoid. Okay, so th think about that as well. This camera doesn't have uh, manual focus, it's all auto, and most cameras are these days. It is a very good facility, um, you get what you pay for. Some of them are really quick focusing systems. I actually prefer to use manual because I can look at my target, I can focus the focus ring and it's set and it will not waver from that. Imagine this, you're filming your subject and you're on manual focus. You can then turn the focusing ring, set it and it will not waver. Now if we're using autofocus and we're filming our subject and some third party happens to come past, to walk past or drive past, it will then lock onto them. When they move away, you now get this searching that's going on for the camera to re sort of readapt and acquire your target. Whilst doing so, it might focus on the windscreen, on the dashboard, on a lamppost, something nearby, and you may miss the money shot. So just be careful with using autofocus. If you can get away with manual, do so. This camera, like I mentioned, a bit cheap. I don't particularly like it. The reason being, I like an eyepiece. I like something that I can put up to my eye and I can actually look through. A lot of the modern cameras have this screen that flips out where you can actually see the scene and you've got to hold it. Now to actually look at the screen, you can't do this. It's too close. So when you put it away from your face, like I'm doing now, you end up with camera shake. So in that case, one of the rules about using video, get a firm grip of your camera, take charge of it. Either use both hands, lean against something, or put a tripod or a monopod on it. Um, the worst thing we can get is um, shaky video or video that's moving all over the place. It looks unprofessional um, and it reflects on your skills. So get a grip of the camera. All cameras have a zoom facility to bring the shot wide. Um, and close up. Try to avoid t um, touching this thing. The only time I ever use it is maybe an opening shot but it's quite wide. Then what I'll do is I'll zoom in, frame a shot and I will keep it on that. So wherever I video the subject is always in that same frame. When you start to zoom in and out, in and out, you don't get any benefit from it apart from the fact it makes your video look very unprofessional. So try to avoid using that, um, that zoom control. It is bad. These cameras are designed for your sister's wedding and christenings and that type of thing. Um, and as such, they've got microphones in them to pick up the audio. Um, you can hear what you're saying. Personally, I don't like that. Um, and what I tend to do is a lot of cameras will have a socket for an external microphone and I'll put a plug in there. And what that does, it actually cuts out the built-in microphones. What type of audio might we hear? You might pick up um, radio transmissions. It might be revealing codes. You may have um, a colleague in the car that's on the telephone giving important sensitive information. You may get chitter chatter. You may get bad language and all this type of thing. We don't want that on the video. Again, it's unprofessional. So we tend to cut that out. If anybody tells you that we're tampering with evidence by doing that, they're wrong. We're not tampering with evidence. All we're doing is cutting off the microphone. We could actually buy a camera without a microphone on it. Doesn't mean we're tampering with evidence. So um, cut the video, uh, cut the audio out. It uh, makes it a little bit more professional. An important thing, and I know people to be caught out with this, is the recording lamp. Disable that within the menu. If you can't, Put a piece of tape over it, paint over it, then put another piece of tape over it in case the first one falls off. Nothing worse than you're shielded in the back of your vehicle 
you're filming your subject and you've got this red light that's screaming out in front of the target. So just make sure you disable the recording lamp. A lot of these cameras have a battery safe feature in them. And what that means is once you've um, activated the camera, you've switched it on, it's up and running, not recording yet. As soon as you press the record button, that will record for as long as the battery lasts and your SD card doesn't fill up. It'll carry on going. Now, if you turn it off from record into standby mode, you'll get an image on the screen and that will stay up for exactly five minutes. Most cameras are exactly five minutes. So be aware of this. You're waiting for your target to come out. You're in standby mode and you're pointing it at your subject. After about four minutes, I'd be wary that the camera is going to close down very shortly. So what I would do is close it down, start it up again, re-energize it. That will give it another five minutes on standby. The last thing you want is the camera shutting down. Just as you get your money shot, you've wasted your time. Like I said, simple camcorder. If I'm doing this professionally, I would spend at least £600 plus on a camcorder. You get what you pay for. If we're being professionals, we need professional equipment, not something from the bottom of the shelf in Argos. Okay, so put some, invest some money into your tools, get the money shot, be professional in the process. Thank you. Out in the car there, we've been talking about our little humble camcorder. Um, like I mentioned, um, very simple to use, relatively inexpensive. Um, but I personally, the only time I use one of these is if I'm going to get out um, on foot in an urban area. Um, if I'm shooting from the car or I'm shooting from an OP, um, I tend not to use these. I'll use one of these, a mirrorless camera. These are the latest um, type of cameras that are now um, taken over from um, digital SLRs in, in some respects. Um, slightly different, in fact, um, they don't have a mirror inside. And because there's no mechanism there, um, physical mechanism, we've got a narrower camera, quite thin, and it's quite light as well, unlike your, um, some of your SLR cameras. Um, this is a Fujifilm X-T3. Fantastic camera. I use it for two reasons. One is I can use it for my still shots. I can change lenses. I can have a wide angle um, lens on there or a telephoto. This is a medium telephoto, um, the equivalent of 70 to 200 millimeter, which brings it reasonably close. And it's also an f2.8, which is quite a fast lens, which is excellent for shooting at nighttime um, and in low light. I do a lot of stills. A lot of work that we re do um, requires still photography. So I can put it into stills mode and I can shoot at very high speed. I think it's something like 15 frames a second um, maximum on here. So I can shoot stills and the shutter speed goes up to eight thousandth of a second, which is really fast um, for high, high um, fast moving subjects. At the flick of a switch, I can then go into video mode. So this is gonna act like my camcorder. The video on here is superb. Now, <clears throat> if you look at our camcorder, that lens and this lens, this is huge, the diameter of that. That is letting in a lot more light. A lot more light hits the sensor. We've also got a very large sensor in here, so the quality is gonna be perfect. And uh, this goes up to 4K. SLRs, DSLRs also shoot video. The only drawback is that um, when the mirror pops up, you get the image in the screen at the back here. And to view, you've got to hold it away from your face to see what you're filming. In doing so, you end up with a bit of camera shake in there. The beauty about mirrorless cameras is that when you put your eye up to the shield, it then transfers from the screen to the eyepiece. So you can look through the eyepiece, concentrate on what you're videoing, and also use your arms, your bodies for stability rather than being out here. Um, quite often when I shoot from a car, um, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because if you shoot through the windows, through the glass, you're gonna get some sort of sheen on the image, a bit of distortion, maybe reflections of something that's in the car. 
So it's more ideal to drop the window slightly and shoot through the open windows. You're then stuck between this rock and a hard place because if you drop the windows, anybody can see in. Um, so make sure that your windows are clean, um, both inside and out. A lot of money and effort has gone into making that glass perfect. We spend a lot of money on it, then we go and shoot through a dirty window. Um, not cheap. The body is £1,500. This lens is about £1,500. And the 400mm, which also attaches to here, is another £1,500. So you've got a lot of, invest a lot of money into your equipment. Having said that, these are the tools of your trade. Um, regardless of what industry you're in, um, if you've got good equipment, it's reliable, it will work for you. And exactly the same. If you buy cheap equipment, your results won't be so good. We have a proverb in the surveillance and photographic world, which goes something like, if you look after your camera, that's it. Look after your camera. Cheers, everybody.